And now, live in studio, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. That's right. Brandon Rhymes is the consumer quarterback. This is the consumer quarterback show. However, Brandon is out today. I'm the executive producer of the consumer quarterback show, James DeJerome, and we are committed to providing you the same quality program we always do. We're interested in improving your ability uh, to make marketplace decisions. We want you to be empowered with information, be a better consumer out there and find a, a little way to make your dollar go a little further. So what Brandon has done is assembled a group of partners. These are business owners who go out of their way to provide some information for us. And we use the show as a platform to pr provide that to you. And the idea is if you listen to the Consumer Quarterback Show, you're going to learn something about business. You're going to learn something about particular fields of interest, and you're going to make wiser decisions in the marketplace. And that's our whole goal as we've assembled these folks for you. So on today's Consumer Quarterback Show, I've uh, been blessed to be joined with two great partners, two guys have been part of the show for quite a while now, uh, and both happen to be from Pennsylvania. So I want to I want to bring in Fred Muth, Fred uh, Tampa Screens and Aluminum. He's been on the show many times. Fred, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, James. And, and uh, for tell me a little bit about the screen game before we introduce Greg here. Well, you know, the screen game has been the same for many, many years. Um, basically, it's an enhancement to the property. And uh, people come from the north, like places like Pennsylvania. Remember that place, Greg? <laughs> yep. They come down here, and, 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 I, and I always make the statement, they want a lanai. And a lot of people don't know what a lanai is. When I came to Florida, I had no clue what a lanai was. I just knew I wanted one. It sounds nice. And, uh, <laughs> I took a call yesterday from a guy from New York. He says, I want a lanai. And I started laughing. He says, why are you laughing? I said, because if you listen to the radio show, you're going to hear me talk about it. People don't know what a lanai is. And he says, well, does does a lanai have a screen roof or a solid roof? I said, it can have either. But for you, I'll do whatever you want. And he started laughing. So um, basically, a lanai is, can be any any extension off the back that requires screen, solid roof, screen roof. Uh, in some cases, even a sunroom can be considered a lanai. So, but uh, that's what we sell. Fred and, has lots uh, of ways to bring value to your home, especially uh, for Floridians, because it's, it can be uncomfortable out there. Because as Greg will tell you, the heat and humidity are back in this area for sure. Hey, uh, Greg, uh, you should be answering the phones right and left right now. It's going up to, <laughs> I think, over 100 today. You know, Florida's hot. The real estate market's hot. The AC business is hot. The screen enclosure business is hot. And it's hot in Florida. Yeah. That's all I got to say. Hey, uh, Greg, I'm sure I heard you guys talking at the break, and uh, we were talking about them portable units. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I, do, I do have a lot of my customers that will put a portable unit inside a screen room that has the vinyl windows. Okay. Uh, they seem to work very well, and uh, I, don't, I don't know much about them, but I do see a lot of them out there. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely an option. Uh, we we also do uh, adding the mini splits, the ductless units to like you know enclosed uh, lanai's. Obviously not if they're screens, but if they're glass, you know enclosed uh, as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. We we have another we have a vinyl window option which a lot of people choose because it's mm -hmm. really not habitable space, and we can install the vinyls and and not call it habitable space. Mm -hmm. And and they work very well in the uh, screen enclosures and screen rooms. Mm -hmm. I, I sold a lot of vinyl rooms. Mm -hmm. Um, Both of you guys are managing to stay busy at this time of year. I mean, as an executive producer of the show, I'm constantly calling business owners and making sure that they're doing okay and checking on the partners. It seems like you guys stay pretty busy even through this issue that we're experiencing now. I know, Fred, you mentioned that you're staying busy. Greg, same same with you guys? Most definitely, yeah. Well, this the heat, uh, you know, whether we're dealing with a pandemic or not, people are, are needing air conditioning. So, uh, yeah, our phones right now are nonstop, um, you know. But question specifically to you about the AC unit perhaps helping the, make the air quality better for them inside the home? We're getting questions of both. There's been some information in the news about air, does air conditioning spread COVID? Um, you know, so we get questions about that. You know, people actually ask, do I have to turn my air conditioner off? Um, you know, the, the, the uh, reports that have been out there about it 
actually spreading it. It's not the air conditioner directly. It's the air currents that the air conditioner can generate. You okay. know, uh, the air conditioner is blowing air into a room. You know, typically, and those air currents, same thing that a fan would produce, can spread the germs in the air. So the air conditioner itself is not doing it. It's those air currents. So. And you guys have taken steps to ensure safety of the customers. I know, Fred, talk a little bit about the steps you've taken as a as a guy going into homes or doing estimates that did make customers a little more comfortable. Well, the first thing I, I tell them when I uh, hang up, you know, obviously before I hang up the phone, when I uh, discuss the lead, I specifically tell them that I practice uh, safe distancing, and I tell them I do about a 15-foot spacing between us, and, and they're okay with that. Most people are fine with that. So in some cases, I'll get to the job site, and, and they'll get closer, you know, and I pull out my tape measure, and I show them what 10 feet is, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I usually get a chuckle out of them. Um, but I, I do not go into the homes. Uh, I don't go into the homes any way, shape, or form at this point. I don't need to. I, I can do all my measurements on the outside. And when I sign the job, uh, I have a very unique method. All the paperwork is ready to go. And I set it down. Most everybody has a back patio or something that's not enclosed yet. And right. I set it down on a table. It's all well marked. I walk 15, 20 feet backwards. And it's, they usually come out with a mask on at that point because they, they know that I'm, that I'm cautious. Right. Um, they sign the papers, drop the check, they walk away, I pick it up, off I go. And I tell them that I'll shake their hand some other day, I hope. That's right. So it's, it's something you can overcome in your field. You found a, a great way to deal with it and hasn't slowed you down a bit. It has not slowed down at all, Dave. As a matter of fact, when this thing hit, um, I, I, um, I looked at my project list of things to do around the house. I said, man, I'm going to get some stuff done. Forget it. That didn't happen. I, I do believe that people are sitting home and they're looking out the back and saying, let's uh, do this improvement now because I'm sitting here in this house. I want to I want to make improvements on this house. And this isn't only in Florida. My younger brother, he is a contractor in the Philadelphia area. He's never been so busy in his life. So, uh, you know, he's, he's a home improvement contractor. Yeah. And um, and it's just that that's what's going on. And, and you know, in your case, Greg, uh, obviously when the when it's hot out, you're, you're busy no matter mm -hmm. what. I, I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I'm you know, starting to notice uh, with Greg's field is it's the humidity that kills me. I'm, I'm starting to like it warm, but I can't stand it wet. Yeah, that well, that's the big deal here in Florida is the humidity. The humidity yeah. is really what makes it so miserable. You know, it wouldn't be so bad in the 80s if it wasn't 80 yeah. percent humidity. Um, that that's what that's what's really now. Cool. You've got your, your units now separate. Can you run just humidity relief and not cool? Certain units can, yes. Yeah, there are demand uh, dehumidification available in certain systems. Now, we can, we can also put in just a dedicated dehumidifier, central dehumidifier, that will solely dehumidify, um, you know, so that's basically just sitting there extracting moisture out of the air all day long. Now, the way a thermostat works, when it senses the room heating, it's going to kick in. How, the, the humidity has the same sensor, so when it senses humidity mm -hmm. at a certain level, it throws it on? Correct, yeah. The, the thermostats today are pretty sophisticated. We can, you know, monitor humidity and temperature with the right thermostat and and control either one and the, those humidity removal units don't require the homeowner to drain them or get rid of the water somehow uh they have a drain just like a central air conditioner okay. unit does we just have to run a, a drain outside somewhere or pump it outside somewhere to get rid of that water and and uh, sometimes we actually will run it into a basin if a customer wants to collect that water because they remove uh uh, we can remove up to 25, 30 gallons of water a day with a dehumidifier. Uh, I know I've heard Fred talk a lot about water being one of the critical things in terms of you and specking the job out because that water that, that used to fall in your backyard is now going to be moved somewhere else. That's right. You know, if you take uh, your average parcel over here in the Brandon area, you know, let's say a cookie cutter, 15,000 square foot parcel, and, uh, you know, it's got a 2,400 square foot structure on it, 900 square foot driveway and sidewalk, you know, and uh, and now they would like to have uh, maybe a, another 1,000 square feet of uh, pool and cage or whatever on the back. I'm taking away a lot of green space. Yeah. And, and when I take away the green space, the water that, that – Previous to taking away the green space, it would percolate down to the aquifer. Is has now got to go elsewhere, and um, you have one parcel next to the other. And of course, the engineers they they design these subdivisions. You you drive by and yeah, you, see the retention, you see the retention pond on the right hand side. You say, "Wow, I'm glad to see that retention pond." Then you drive by in a heavy rainstorm, and the retention pond is dry, and the ballpark across the field is soaking wet. And and it's not that it's misengineered. It, I believe it has a lot to do with the way the aquifer flows. So, um, you know, the poor kids, they're not playing in the 
in the ball field, they're playing ball in the uh, in the retention pond. And, and I don't say that being comical because I've, I've seen that. Um, and and you know, like let's take the city of Tampa for example. Uh, I need every job that I sell that requires foundation work. I I have to do a uh, a green space equation to make sure that we can pour the concrete. And I appreciate that, even though it hurts the jobs and, and the size in some cases. I believe it's very, very beneficial to appreciate the green space and try to figure where that water is going to go. I have uh, customers as well as friends that live in South Tampa, and when it rains hard, they just want to leave yeah, because the water, the water sits and it's it just goes nowhere. I mean, you're so close to to, um, to the uh, sea level, yeah. it, where can it go? And that's the problem. I drive through there on days it does not rain and there's still standing water. It's la- you know oh, I mean? it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, that's even, that's even worse because then, then it, you know the mosquitoes and everything else uh, contributes to to more problems. Hey, now that you're on mosquitoes, I had a guy tell me that there are certain screens that mosquitoes uh, there are certain sizes or gauges that you need to be aware of because of the insect size. Well, here's uh, my opinion, and it's strictly my opinion on that. There's a, a product out there called a 2020 fabric, which is noceum resistant but it's really not 100 percent noceum proof because noceums the size that they are they can almost penetrate anything they are basically microscopic so when a person asks me about the noceum screen i i tell them that the 2020 is available um but it's really not 100 percent noceum uh, proof and uh, if you're worried about mosquitoes mosquitoes are not going to get through the standard 1814 and the standard 1814 is what what is in most of your house windows nationwide so it's a it's a very bug proof product what i don't like about 2020 fabric is when you put it on the sidewalls it's such a tight weave it holds dirt it holds water and it's a bear to clean uh and i know because i have it at home here (laughs) i never thought about that so you're saying the screening is so tight that it doesn't allow some particles to get through well now it's terrible to clean you have to you have to triple clean it from both sides and 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 at that you still can't get all the dirt out of it where so so it blocks visibility Mm -hmm. and um, i i like i'm not a big fan of the 2020 fabric on sidewalls i i'll recommend the 2020 fabric for people um who have skin concerns uh, that want a large page and i'll recommend it for the top because there's about a 25 percent reduction in ultraviolet on the 2020 fabric versus about a 15 percent reduction on ultraviolet for the 15 for the 1814 product man i noticed so that some it, of the plants really do well in a screened enclosure they do. They do. I, I mean, you know, if you're out in the sun, you, me, the plant, whatever, you're broiling in the sun. The sun is brutal down here. So when, when you put that fabric over top, it's a nice little reduction on ultraviolet. All right. So we're visiting with uh, Greg Bowman, the AC guy of Tampa Bay, and Fred Muth, uh, Tampa Screens and Aluminum. When we come back, we're going to share more stories from those guys about what they're up to and ways that you can add value to your home, whether it's a screen room or improving your AC. And certainly we want to get rid of that humidity. So come on back and check us out on the Consumer Quarterback Show. This is work done, and you're listening to the Real Estate Quarterback Show, hosted by my man, Brandon Rhymes. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372, online at ConsumerQB.com.
listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. Online at ConsumerQB.com. That's right. ConsumerQB.com is where you can find all the partners that you hear on the Consumer Quarterback Show with Brandon Rhymes. My name is James DeGerome. We've had a couple of good uh, conversations here with Greg Bowman. He's the AC guy of Tampa Bay and Fred Muth from Tampa Screens and Aluminum, who are both partners on the program. And of course, we talk about the show. What it does for you as a consumer is provide you with some information, some knowledge that makes your dollar go a little farther in the marketplace. In addition to that, Brandon wants to tell you something good, something positive for your day. And I got a little story about a study that was done about COVID-19's impact on fathers and families that I'm going to share with you here coming up in a little while. But I wanted to get back to Greg because it's so hot outside that now if you're if you're in your car and you don't have if you have vinyl seats, your shirt is stuck to your back. So if you're driving around out there now and you're wondering why is it so wet, it's because the humidity down here is brutal, and that's why you need the AC guy at Tampa Bay. Tell them about uh, what you can do for the humidity, Greg. Yeah, it's definitely a tough time to be in Florida, and uh, I can't imagine before air conditioning what it would have been like to to have dealt with this. Uh, um, but yeah, the air conditioning today has come a long way. Um, there's so much we can do to control humidity and and uh, eliminate uh, that. Actually, allow you to set the temperature higher in the house by controlling the humidity better. Um, so you don't have to keep it. You know, I've been in homes where people could hang meat on the yeah. on the walls because they keep it at like in the mid 60s because they're trying to get the humidity out. Um, if we get right. the humidity out, you can be very comfortable in the you know low 80 range. The uh, windows are all fogged up. And, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. I've seen that. I remember going in some places and, and university. They just had it, the AC was controlled centrally. It, you didn't even have the ability to do anything about it. So it would be at 68. You'd walk in there 66 degrees or something. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah that was all basically to keep it as com- you know as comfortable for as many people as possible and they were driving the temperature low to re- remove humidity um, we don't have to drive the temperature that low if we get the humidity out that's why Arizona you know is you know people out there talk about oh it's 105 degrees but it's not that hot you right. know because there's not the humidity so. <laughs> well tell me about the summers in Pennsylvania hey, uh, Fred you guys are both up from Pennsylvania area I know it's a little different than down here well, it's uh, it's hot. When it gets hot in Pennsylvania, it's hot and sticky. Um, uh, you know, Florida is a peninsula, so even though it's hot and humid, at least you have some airflow somewhere, so that you don't have all the industrial, yeah. whatever from Philadelphia sticking to your skin. And that's one thing about the Northeast. It, 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 a true statement, and Greg, you'd probably back me up with that. When it gets hot up there, you can feel the dirt sticking to your skin. Yeah, yeah, that is that is definitely a benefit of where we are here in Florida with the coastal breezes. It definitely helps. Yeah. Now the Jersey Shore is a different story. When it's hot and humid down there on the Jersey Shore, it's you don't feel that because mm-hmm. you're 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 basically near the ocean. I'm and trying I to. Spend a month- Spent a lot of time at the Jersey Shore. I'm trying to think of that area, how many times I've seen a screen room, and I've not. I can't think of any of my relatives up in the Northeast that have a screened patio or some kind of a screening. Well, they don't because they, they, there's no snow load. Oh. Uh, in the He's the been so long. North, the furthest north that you'll see a screen enclosure is in the Carolinas, and when I when I would play golf in Myrtle Beach, you know. Everybody was, all my golf partners were looking at all kinds of things. Me, I'm, my eyes are focused on the screen. Room. They say, what, what's wrong? No wonder you can't hit the ball in the hole. You keep one of them in the screen room. But, uh, uh, but yeah, you know, you get into uh, North Carolina, uh, no, you don't have them. And, and again, it's all about snow load. But, uh, in the I've been a Floridian yeah, so ahead. long that my uh, my snow awareness was completely I, I, <laughs> snow. What are you talking about? I, I still have it. I brought my snow shovel down here from Pennsylvania, and, <laughs> and uh, at Halloween time, I stick it out on the front lawn. People run away. <laughs> well, I know that the the, uh, the screen rooms are going so good down here, and you guys offer that panoramic view. That that's something I didn't think that you could do. I love the pan of view. Um, I, I, I started out in this business in 1992, believe it or not, and uh, I was just a little kid right out of high school. Just kidding. <laughs> and um, back then, actually, people, customers wanted something with a more open view. We could not mm. offer it. And, and, you know, they, you know, some of the engineers that I would sell to, they would have a design, but we just couldn't get, we couldn't get engineering to build it. And um, I'm going to guess at the time frame, I believe the Pano View enclosures, uh, I think they hit the market in the Tampa Bay area about 10 years ago. And, and when that happened, it was a great thing because I knew that the market required that product. And the engineering uh, was available at that point. So I, I do take a lot of calls where 
people uh, have seen our work, have seen our pan of view enclosures, and now they want to tear down the old one and go with a new one. And geez, we got a reposition. We got to reposition those uprights. So how does that work, Fred? If they're going to do a, mm -hmm. uh, if you have to re-engineer. Well, let's say if, let's say it's sixty feet across on the back side. Okay, now instead of having, uh, let me see, 60, let me do some math here, eight, eight, you know, let's say instead of having eight or nine openings on the back side, in 60 feet, I can do three large openings. And um, for engineering reasons, uh, the header, the very top beam, goes up to a two by 10, which in a standard product is either two by three, two by four, depending on how it's engineered but gotcha. it goes to a heavy gauge two by ten and it's supported by heavy gauge four by four uprights whereas the standard enclosure is supported by two by four or two by five or maybe in some cases two by six uprights but the four by four is a structurally uh you know it's, it's a it's there's more metal more meat to that uh -huh. uh, four by four than there is to the two by four two by five or two by six so you automatically have um, you know, altogether different type of structure supporting this, I, and and it was never so much about about the, the you know the support. It was more about wind load. Yeah, I was going to say wind, wind seems to be the key. The wind, wind is the key. Now, when you do when you when you stretch this out, you know, let's say you have a twenty foot run with no uprights, and it goes uh, screen, you know top to bottom is is ten feet. Now you you got two hundred square feet of fabric. Yeah. So they, they use a uh, product called uh, it's called PolyScreen, and uh, the the beauty of the PolyScreen is more flexible, ah, and okay. it's easier it's easier to roll in. And and if you would put PolyScreen on your standard enclosure on a few panels versus um, the standard fabric, after it's done, you could push on them in both and see where the PolyScreen has more give to it. Yeah, that makes and sense. That, that's the beauty to it, because uh, you know you, you're 200 square feet. You want that to give in a in a windstorm. Yeah. When it's... I when I started out working in this business, the maximum square footage on a panel was 56 square feet of screen, and um, and I saw the demonstrations years ago where at 130 miles an hour, at 129 that fabric would stay there. At 130, in every case, it would blow out. Hmm. So it was engineered to 130 at 56 square feet. Now, in today's world, with the poly fabric, uh, you're probably uh, looking at the same thing with a 130 wind that's probably going to stay there, maybe so, 125. So in innovation, new technology, and uh, everything moves. How, Greg, how, any impacts, what would you say in your field, in the air conditioning field, uh, that has impacted the game or changed it a little bit recently technology-wise? Anything that you can think of? Uh, the inverter compressor is probably the most recent impact. That and smart technology. A lot of uh, smart stuff is getting into air conditioning now. So, um, you know, smart thermostats have been for a while, but a lot of the units now themselves are becoming smart. We can uh, connect to them and set them up with our phones. Whereas, you know, back when mm -hmm. I started doing this, you didn't have that ability. I knew a guy that was a mechanic that told me he had to learn because of the the computer systems in automobiles now, it's basically going to computer school for all his guys, whereas in the old days, they never had to think about computers controlling the vehicle. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of times the mechanics are locked up because of an issue, a, a software issue, a mm -hmm. glitch. Mm -hmm. So you've had to learn how these smart systems control AC. Mm -hmm. The AC might not be coming on because the smart systems in error rather than the AC unit itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ironic you mentioned that. We do have a unit that we're dealing with today, a customer, a two-year-old unit that was high-end smart, um, and uh, we're having to replace the unit today because of the smart technology. It just mm, took a dump and uh, is not working, and we couldn't get it straightened out. The manufacturer finally said, here's a new unit, just replace it. Um, so, yeah, it is a whole different ball game, really. When, you know, when I started, everything was electromechanical. You had relays and contactors, and everything was you know on and off. Mm -hmm. But today, it's all computerized. It's definitely different. I tell you, it's it's impacted everyone, and I, even in the radio world, we talk a lot about technology and how great it is. You just have to learn it, and you have to learn how to work around. You have to have a workaround in case it doesn't allow you to do what you're normally doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, Fred, when you're out there doing estimates, you still paper and pencil? Tell me about uh, tape measure, paper and pencil get you done, or you need a laptop to do what you do? No, no, I, I do all pencil, paper, calculator, and uh, get on the phone and sell the job. It's it's pro, it's pretty much it's it's a basic product. It's a basic system. Um, I don't I don't need to go beyond a tape measure. However, there are, there are laser systems out there available for measurements, and uh, you know a lot of the um, the competition prefab companies where they build it in a factory and they bring it out, they'll they'll uh, measure everything with a laser. 
with, with our company, we still measure with tape measure because we, we build them on site. We right. custom them. So, so I'm, you know, I think you know me enough that I'm real, really not ever thrilled about too much technology <laughs> in my life. You know, I still have a 67 Camaro in the garage, believe it or not. Yeah, a little peek behind the scenes, you know, as COVID-19 impacts everything, it impacted the Consumer Quarterback Show. And so we had a lot more guests doing Zooms and different things. And Fred said, I'll just call. I'm not going to spend too much time setting up this computer and going through all this Zoom technology because in a few months I won't need to anyway. Well, actually, in a few months, I'm going to do a Zoom session. You know, I carry an appraiser license, too, and I'm doing my 30-hour um, continuing education oh, okay. on Zoom. It's going to be three days where you have to be on the Zoom. So I had a friend of mine set me up on Zoom, and I had so much fun on the Zoom. But it took a while to set it up. <laughs> now you... And, and, and there were a few there were a few snags so when brandon mentioned uh doing it with zoom i said nah just call me because there were you know i said to myself a lot of snags that's the way to do it and i think i think you guys ran into a few snags Uh, we do we've plenty plenty (laughs) we're coming into a break here more with our guys on the consumer quarterback show greg bowman the ac guy of tampa bay and fred muth tampa screens and aluminum come on back consumer quarterback show rolls on this is chris voss former fbi lead hostage negotiator and owner of the black swan group and you're listening to Consumer Quarterback Show, hosted by my friend Brandon Rice. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com. Listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes, online at consumerqb.com. Brandon is Tampa Bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice. Call Brandon today at 813-670-7372. That's right, Brandon Rhymes, the platinum MVP team with Keller Williams. He's the host of the Consumer Quarterback Show. However, he is out today. My name is James DeJerome. I'm the executive producer of the Consumer Quarterback Show. And like we do every day on the Consumer Quarterback Show, we brought a couple of partners together and we're talking a little bit about their fields and trying to give you some information and knowledge that will empower you as a consumer in the marketplace. We're visiting with Greg Bowman, the AC guy of Tampa Bay, and Fred Muth from Tampa Screens and Aluminum. You're familiar with those guys if you listen to the show. They've been on a long time and they got great information for you. And certainly you can trust those folks. They both happen to be from Pennsylvania. Uh, and have been down here for a while, so they're they're used to the heat down here. Uh, I was going to get a little bit of that background with you, Fred. Uh, when you started doing screens, you didn't know about screens, like you said, till you came down here. So tell me about what it took for you to become the screen expert that you are now. Well, I mean, 
my neighbor had this enclosure built and um you know we we bought a brand new we purchased a brand new home here and, and my neighbor came down and said look at you got to come up and look at my enclosure well, wow so i went up and looked at it and i said gee i like this I go, this is a nice business down here and i was involved in a couple other things and then um a friend of mine who who lived on the street uh tom I, i'll just say his first name um, him and his brother, they purchased a company and they were the guys doing the screen enclosures. And, uh, one day I was talking to Tom, he says, why don't he says, Hey, our salesman left. He says, why don't you come on down? And if you like these things so much, I'll show you how to sell them, man. I liked it. So I went down, I started working with Tom and Ed of the other company. And, uh, I, I, I stayed with them until about 2000, I think it was nine, nine or 10. And they decided to retire. So um, at that point, uh, I turned right over to my friendly competitor, Richard Pulse, who owns Tampa Screens. And, and him and the guys that owned the other company, they were friendly. We shared business together. So nothing really changed. I just changed companies, right. and everything stayed the same. And, um, you know, everything that uh, the previous company did, uh, you know, the, 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 hat, the hat would always go off to them from Tampa screens and anything that Tampa screens would do, the hat would always go off, get off the Tampa screens because there was this ultimate respect between both companies. Well, that's the way so, it should uh, be. Yeah, well, it definitely should be. And, and I, uh, you know, being in the business as long as I, I have, I, I, I still share business with other contractors. People call me, you know, I can't get to this one. Can you handle this one? Sure. I'll do it. You know, Mm. And, uh, you know, something far away in another place, and I'll give it to somebody else. We, we have to do that. That's, you know, strategic partners work. Absolutely. That's, uh, no matter what you do in business, you, 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 can't, you can't isolate yourself from your competitors because uh, no. you're all doing the same thing. Our audience here on the Consumer Quarterback Show knows Chris Hatfield as well. Tell me about Chris. Chris. <laughs> My opinion of Chris, he shouldn't be in the aluminum business. He should be a radio man. Boy, <laughs> I, I listened to him on the radio. I said, he missed his calling. <laughs> you know, he <laughs> acted like he was he uncomfortable. Was he acted like he was uncomfortable at first, and then I couldn't shut him up. Oh, no, I, I mean, no he's good. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> driving down the road one day, and I, I just turned the show on, and I'm listening. I'm saying, geez, who's this guy? Man, he knows his business. And it turned out to be Chris. I'm like, geez, there's Chris. There's, you know, I, I like Chris. Chris has a tremendous background in the industry. He, I think his father was in the business. Yeah. And um, they, you know, they, Chris knew everything about the business when he came to work for Tampa Screen. Apparently, he worked for Tampa Screens uh, longer than I have at one point. He, he worked prior to me being there, and then he came back. Um you know, he's, he's a super guy. I, we don't cross paths too often because, number one, we all stay out of the office in most cases right now. We're, we're trying right, not to right, go into right. the office because of this COVID thing. Uh, quite often, I'll drop paperwork off at the office, and, and I'll, you know, I'll be pulling in, and he'll be pulling out. We wave. That's about as far as, as – as, as, that's the most that we really get in touch with each other at this point. Sure. Uh, I, I did meet him in the studio. That's the first time I met him was in the studio. <laughs> and, uh, and I, I'm, you know, your first impressions are, are what they are. And, and I was impressed with the guy. I really was. No, I think and then he's... I heard him talk. I said, geez, this guy really could talk. Yeah, he's, a, he's a great guest. Hey, Greg, how be about. Careful. He'll, be careful. He'll take your job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. Uh, hey, hey, Greg, in ter terms of uh, AC guy of Tampa Bay, are you guys in ex hiring or where are you at uh, personnel wise with your staff or people in terms of the COVID impact is, do you need mm -hmm. less people, more people? What are you thinking? Uh, right now we're not actively recruiting. We are always recruiting though. We're always keeping our eyes open for talent. Um, but, um, we could probably bring somebody on right now just to keep up with the load, but I'm I'm hesitant to do that till we know mm -hmm. what what exactly is going to happen. So with the weather and all, are you seasonal? Do you try to have a larger staff once it starts mm -hmm. to really ramp up the heat and humidity down here, or do you keep mm -hmm. you know how does that work? Uh, we do not. I, I'm not a fan of burn, you know bringing somebody on and then having to lay them off. I just right. I don't think that's a good business model to follow. So um, we make do. Um, this in the slow season, it's a little slow. We got to scrounge for work. Uh, this time of year, the guy's got to work a little right. extra hard um, is kind of how we work it. Now, the VIP program really helps uh, level that off. Tell me about uh, that again. Uh, the VIP program is our maintenance program, basically, where we come in and take care of your air conditioning on an annual or 
actually twice year basis, biannual basis. We're coming in, maintaining your system and doing all that for $14 a month. But that basically allows us to schedule those maintenance visits when we can schedule them. Uh, and the benefit of doing maintenance is it reduces a lot of demand calls. Um, so instead of letting your air conditioner break when it's going to break, which is going to be on the hottest, most humid day <laughs> of the year, um, by doing maintenance, we can catch those problems before they break and fix them at a convenient time when it doesn't leave you without air. So uh, it really helps kind of level out our workload. I could imagine that there's some people out there that come down here and just turn it on 65. And now it may not get to 65 in their house, but that's where just how they leave it. You know, so it gets a temperature they can tolerate. Mm -hmm. Is there a, is there a logic or a smart way to run your unit uh, in terms of when you leave or when you're home and what is an acceptable number to put on that there? I recall the government actually advising folks in, in, during the energy crisis to not go below 72 on their thermostat. What's your take on that? The temperature is really not that critical. It's the humidity. Um, you know, we don't want our humidity to go above 60% because above that is when mold and mildew will start growing. Yeah. So if somebody, especially a you know snowbird is down here and they leave and go back up north and they don't turn the air conditioner down and let the humidity build up, they can come back to a nightmare of mold. Right. Uh, so, but controlling the, the humidity is the most important part. The temperature is really irrelevant. The setting is about making sure that the humidity doesn't get above 60 percent um, the energy crisis so the reason that was talked about is just because the lower we set the temperature the more the air runs the more power it's consuming um, I, I i can recall as a kid seeing coils that were frozen or imp impassable you know air wasn't impassable because mm -hmm. the thing was on i don't know if it was on so long or they just mm -hmm. never maintained the filter or what caused it to condense like there's a there's a number of things that can cause that dirty filters is one symptom low on refrigerant uh, is another um overworking the air conditioner does it specifically on the beaches um you know that where, where we usually see that as the vacation rentals um people come down they have got this beautiful view and these glass doors that they just want to open them up but they don't turn the air off and they have it set at 65 yeah. degrees and it's just running and running and running and running and running um that can can, can cause it to freeze up uh, too now in a situation where you feel like you've overused it or burned it what do you got new circuits what do you have to do when you come in is that a new unit uh, not always. Um, you know, it just depends on a lot of factors as what needs to be done. Um, you know, we can most times repair units uh, if if it you know makes sense to do that. Uh, if the unit's newer, then obviously it probably makes sense to to do a repair. And we talked in the past about nowadays th there's not such a difference in terms of construction of these units. It's very similar. Not one brand twice the expense of another because it's got twice the reputation in terms of uh, production. They're, mm -hmm. they're closer together. Is that correct? Yeah. Brand isn't really what I would value anymore. When I started in the industry, brand was big. There, you know, we At that time, we talked about the five big brands. There was Train, Lennox, Carrier, York. Right. Um, we, those were the brands you wanted to get if you wanted a good quality product. Today, it really doesn't matter what brand you buy. The most important part is who's the guy putting it in mm -hmm. um, because you know, it would be like um, if we bought a car today, we buy it by the brand. We Because Ford, for example, they do everything with that car. They source the parts, they put them together, they test it, they assemble it, they've engineered it. Um, with an air conditioner, um, the brand, they've sourced the parts and put them together in, in partially. Mm -hmm. um, the contractor is the guy who takes the remaining parts that they've put together, brings them into your home, and makes them work in your home. So um, there's a lot of value in what contractors do in the job. What of the relationship between the air handler and the unit? It can I, I, you mm -hmm. replace one independent of the other, but they have to coordinate? Yeah, years ago, we would replace them independently. Um, today, we pretty much have to replace them as a set because of code. Code now requires when we replace uh, any kind of part of the system, we have to have an engineering certification that shows the energy efficiency of that unit. Um, manufacturers have to pay for that certification. They're not going to pay for that certification to match just any pieces of equipment. Um, so we're kind of almost stuck in replacing replacing them yeah. as sets now. And you feel like the warranties from the manufacturer are about similar? That well, there's there's wide difference there. That that's the most important thing I think to look at today, rather than brand, is what the what the warranties and guarantees are. Uh, a lot of manufacturers now are pretty much across the board warranting their parts for ten years or more. 
Uh, the most important part, in my opinion, is the labor warranty. That's where it's it's really at today. I mean, if they're going to warrant the parts, that's great. But to give you an example, we had a train unit that we did not put in uh, that was three years old that the evaporator coil went out in it to replace that evaporator coil was $2,500. In labor, <laughs> um, you know, so to get in there and take it apart, correct, because yeah, okay. of how difficult it was to do a, a, a labor warranty. You know, so a, a three-year-old a customer who bought this unit is three years old um, is quite upset that that, that, there, that that kind of cost is involved. So that's where where I believe the the real value is is it you know when you're shopping a unit shop couple of things shop the contractor most importantly Absolutely. i'm sure fred will echo that yeah. but that really you know would would affect the aluminum business as well but yeah. um that that and then the guarantees and warranties hey fred so a uh, big windstorm comes and they they call you and say you got to come put all their screens back together or you guys have haven't had to deal with that kind of thing or is that even spelled out does anyone ever try to say that you're responsible in case of a you know a wind what are you going to do about wind you can't do anything about it now, wind, wind is usually not the problem with the fabric. Uh, generally, it's flying debris uh. that does the damage. And uh, the majority of, like, for example, when there's a major storm, the majority of the damage is usually caused by tree limbs or um, trees falling on the enclosures. That's about 60% of it. And, uh, of course, of course, depending on the wind, you know, a lot of times the, um, uh, the, the neighbor's uh, chairs and table will fly in the air and go through the enclosure yeah. that, that kind of thing but the fabric itself usually stay, stays i <clears throat> i've seen where uh going back to uh Char hurricane charlie back in 04 um geez i mean house roofs would go and the cage would half of the cage would go and the rest of the cage would stay there you know and people say how did my house roof go and the cage right. not you know it's, it's a tough question to answer but um you know back then the the engineering was lighter on everything including mm -hmm. the cages and as well as house roofs but um and well so there's a pizza line sorry about that <laughs> pizza. Want, you want two to go all right, hang in there. We're going to come back and visit with the guys a little more. Uh, Consumer Quarterback Show is going to continue to give you good news with a feel-good story like we always do. And more from our guys, Fred Muth, Tampa Screens and Aluminum, Greg Bowman, the AC guy of Tampa Bay. So come on back and check out the show. Hey, this is Grant Cardone, and you're listening to Consumer Quarterback Show, hosted by my friend Brandon Rhymes. Do not touch that dial. I'll come right through the radio and grab your throat. To get in touch with Brandon, call 813-670-7372, online at ConsumerQB.com.
You're listening to The Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rimes, online at ConsumerQB.com. Brandon is Tampa Bay's number one consumer advocate for real estate and financial advice. Call Brandon today at 813-670-7372. You're listening to The Consumer Quarterback Show with Brandon Rimes. Brandon is out today. My name is James DeJerome. I'm the producer of The Consumer Quarterback Show. As you've uh, heard Greg Bowman, the AC guy of Tampa Bay, Fred Muth, Tampa Screens and Aluminum, been sharing some stories about their business and some of the things that they've uh, done during this COVID period that we're dealing with. And I got a feel good story. One of the things Brandon always wants to do is encourage you to take time away from negativity and t- tell you something positive. And we're going to do that. I-, I found a study about COVID-19 and its impact on the family. I wanted to read a little bit for you about it. Uh, this is about fathers and kids. So it says a new study revealed that fathers feel closer to their children as a result of COVID-19. The study released by the Canadian Men's Health Foundation found that in a survey of more than 1,000 Canadian fathers, dads were seeing positive changes in the dynamic with their children. Even though families have faced stressors and challenges with COVID-19, we recognize that fathers have been granted a golden opportunity to take time and slow down and connect with their kids. So it says many parents work full-time and commute, and when, when that's taken away, they have more opportunities for togetherness, like a game of catch or going for a hike. Men's health is impacted by their living situations, and they get a little more physical activity with their kids. It makes a big difference. So it says uh, we've got some statistics. They said they've learned some things from the pandemic. During this lockdown, 40% of the respondents said that COVID-19 has had a positive impact on their role as a father. 52% said they're more aware of the importance as a, uh, of being a father. 60% feel closer to their kids. And 49% say they've engaged in uh, uh, engaged more engaged with their kids as a result of COVID-19. So two-thirds of fathers have been providing companionship to their kids more often during the lockdown. And likewise, 56% have been providing guidance to their kids more often and are planning to do that in the future as well. So trying to find a silver lining for you as we do on the consumer quarterback show trying to find something positive out there the time you spend at home you know can be time well spent and i just want to encourage everybody out there to like brandon always says commit a random act of kindness and it could be even inside your own family where you think you're already taking care of everybody all right so back to the show greg bowman the ac guy at tampa bay and Fred Muth of Tampa Screens and Aluminum, they get together during the break and they have discussions right over my head. You guys are talking about filtration. Why don't we pick that up? Tell me a little bit about it. Wow. I was I was amazed at what Greg was telling me because uh, I asked Greg about HEPA filters and how beneficial they are. And then Greg um, proceeded to tell me about the, the newer uh, well, what products is a, out start there. With me. That, Since that I don't know, Fred, what is HEPA? Filter. What is a HEPA filter, Fred? Uh, you know, I, I don't. I just know we have them here. Yeah. My wife has allergies, and she buys these special HEPA filters that are, uh, I think it's a much tighter filter. Okay. Yeah, it's a, HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Arrestance. Uh, the true, true HEPAs are used in hospitals and emergency rooms, that type of area, to uh, reduce bacteria, virus spread. Um, they're not 100% effective, but they will, will definitely reduce down to really small. All micron uh, and this isn't a product that regular did I could put in my AC unit isn't mm-hmm. yeah, it is. yeah it is yeah oh, okay. now, now there's some misnomers out there like Fred is when he's referring to HEPA is probably referring to really what's a media filter it's a better filtration system than the standard filter true HEPA uh, is very expensive to have in in your home so I doubt that I, I might be wrong Fred but I doubt that that's what your your wife is buying because they're typically to replace those parts are four or five hundred dollars you know per unit per per yes yeah wow in a true well, HEPA. yeah let's put it this way she never told me what she spent on <laughs> it's probably it's probably media filters that you have which a lot of people in the air conditioning industry call those hepa because they are a better filtration system they're more t- like like high, like the true hepas uh, than your typical one inch filter that we get They're they're basically a cartridge filter that's you know maybe five to six inches thick and wow. pleats that okay. it's got a lot of surface area and it'll reduce a lot of that fine particulates so your yeah, unit has to accept that. You have to have a part of the unit built for that, and it can be added to any system. Uh, a lot of times, a little bit of duct modification, it can be can be added. Um, hey, Fred, what was the other wow. thing you talked about light, Fred? 
Well, yeah, the, um, Greg was mentioning the, the UV light uh, lighting systems that are available now to kill COVID and, and other uh, other viruses. Wow, mm-hmm. that was amazing. Can you comment further on that, Greg? Yeah, well, UVC, um, which is basically ultraviolet, the C is the wavelength. It's 254 nanometers is the particular wavelength of light, which is, is ultraviolet, will kill bacteria, viruses. And we've used that for 40 plus years in air conditioning. It's been out for a long time that we've been using it. Um, it's just we haven't gotten really smart about using it. Actually, there was a article I just read yesterday that uh, um, some people were um, uh, arguing that we should be using it in public spaces. What they're saying is we should put sensors inside of public spaces that when there's no occupancy, there's UV lights in that building that turn immediately on, sterilizes, just sterilize the room as soon as people walk out of the huh. room and then it's empty. And then as soon as there's occupancy again, the lights shut off and it's safe for people to come back in. UV is natural. It's it's in sunlight you know it's what causes skin cancer you know it's not good for us directly on our skin but it is very effective at can killing bacteria viruses and things like that mm-hmm. uh, and we've had it forever to be able to mount in the air conditioning system to you know kill b- mold mildew bacteria viruses as they're traveling through the airstream hmm. That's nice. And how about the copper? We were talking copper as well. Yeah, well, copper um, it, it, copper is a natural antimicrobial. Um, the Romans knew it. Uh, the Egyptians knew it. The Egyptians have texts from the, that they knew that it reduced, you know, like water would last longer if they put it in a copper vessel than if they put it in a clay pot. So they, they knew this uh, um, for a long time. We've known it. Actually, in the 1800s, the 1850s, there's a cholera outbreak in France, and the only people in France, subset of people, People who were totally unaffected by it were the copper miners and the copper smelters. Um, so copper is, you know, a natural antimicrobial. I mean, in my opinion, we should make doorknobs out of copper. You know, anything we can that hmm. we, that is a touch surface. Uh, if we put copper there, it's it's naturally going to going to kill bacteria and viruses. Say, out of every you know tragic situation, there comes an opportunity, and you just have yeah. to use technology and, and education and try to think through it. And I guarantee somebody out there is going to find a way to turn this into a positive or, or find a solution that comes in a way that you wouldn't think of it. You guys mentioning the sunlight, I've heard that recommended by different organizations as something that's positive in a way of uh, treating it or get outside and, and spend some time in the sun. It has a, mm-hmm. it has a detrimental effect on the COVID virus. Yes. I'm assuming that as you're, as you're walking down the street in, in a hot, sunny day, I'm assuming that if it's airborne, you've you got a better chance yeah. than if it's not a hot, hot, sunny day. What do you think about that, Greg? Yeah, most definitely. Uh, the you know sunlight, like I said, there's UV rays there, so they're naturally working to kill any kind of you know virus that's in the air. Um, viruses mm-hmm. thrive in a high, humid, dark situations. So um, put it in the light, and and it's going to naturally uh, you know want to want to eliminate it. It's a great time to get out in your screen room, huh, Fred? Yeah, you know, um, it's hard to really top um, top what Greg's saying. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a very tough act to follow. You know, look, to go from that to screen enclosures, I don't know what to say. Maybe we should start building these enclosures out of copper. <laughs> See, innovation. Uh, you're on innovation. the cutting edge, Fred. Yeah, hey, um, tell me, you know, anybody out there who wants to get a screen enclosure, we're coming down the last few minutes of the show. How's the best way to get in touch with you, Fred? Best thing to do is just contact Tampa Screens and Aluminum. People do it every day, 813-960-7064. I could give my cell phone out, but there's no reason to do that. Let them call into the office, and and they'll route the lead from there. Uh, The majority of our business comes in by telephone. And how busy? You said you're pretty busy. What what are they looking at in terms of uh, getting you out to the place? Well, I unfortunately, I cannot handle all the leads in a timely manner that I'd like to. Uh, I'm able to bid some of the work by photos and and, um, and surveys, okay. and I'm doing a lot of that. Um, if people want me to get to the site, typically I'm about two weeks out right now to get to the site. Okay. Um, in some cases, if there's foundation work required, I may be able to get my concrete contractor, his salesman, out to give them the quote on the concrete quicker. Uh, or if there's uh, paver work involved, I, I turn that over to the paver contractors and I let them bid that first. And that way, at least the customer's getting in the system of getting a price. Right. 
Okay. How about you, Greg? What's the best way for folks to get the AC guy of Tampa Bay to come out to their place? Uh, phone is probably the most direct method. 727-286-3170 is our direct line. We actually have a couple of numbers floating out there, but that's the main main line. They'll all connect to that. Uh, you can also catch us on the web at acguyoftampa.com. No the and no bay. Our full name's the AC guy of Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. We drop the the and bay and just AC guy of Tampa for our website. And what's the special again? Uh, well, on our VIP program, yeah. $14 a month. We come out twice a year, take care of your air conditioning system, uh, do all the maintenance that is required on that system. Uh, we also then will provide service after hours at no additional charge and give you a 20% discount on any other work you need. Can't beat that, especially with the situation we're dealing with now out there. So hot, so humid. Well, it's been a great show. Thanks so much for the guys coming on. Like we always say with uh, the Consumer Quarterback Show, we're doing our best to inform you guys and give you information and knowledge. Brandon wants us to encourage you to commit a random act of kindness. And certainly, I think that's something that goes a long way in our community. Uh, Greg Bowman, the AC guy at Tampa Bay. Fred Muth, Tampa Screens and Aluminum. Just some of the partners you can find at ConsumerQB.com. We've really gone out of our way to try to make this a place, a centralized hub for you to find folks that can help you and empower you in the marketplace. Thanks, Brandon, for letting me sit in your chair and hope to see you guys again soon. ConsumerQB.com. You've been listening to the Consumer Quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. Whether it's real estate, consumer, or financial advice, let Brandon call your next play. Contact Brandon Rhymes at 813-670-7372. That's 813-670-7372. Online at ConsumerQB.com. And join us next time. For-